the computer now and you probably even get warned about that. Okay, so not warned, just notified, I guess. So this is the yeah. way, welcome, Wednesday, January 3rd. This is the way I was thinking about running things. I'm looking at the problems you're doing in chapter one in sections one, 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 two, one, three, and one, four. And in the back of the chapter, I was reading through problems and I thought these were interesting. Now I can pick one out and do it, or maybe you've got your own list, or maybe you say, yeah, I think 76 is good. Tell me how to do 76. That's the way how I want to run it. So do you have anything immediately you wanted to ask? No, not. Not, I think of, not yet, at least. I may end up coming with a problem or two during the uh, Zoom, but none at the moment yet. Okay, that's right. And that's perfect. So let me do one more thing. Let me get one more camera turned on here. So I'll pick one out, and then you see how you like that. And then whenever you have a preference, you jump in. So what I'm doing right now is getting my other camera connected just in case. Got it. I need to get the lighting on there, that's better. I need to start the video. I need to turn it around. I need to aim it at the board just in case. Got it. And let me do this with you just in case. The one thing you guys got to remember when you're doing Zoom is your Zoom and my Zoom are different. You control what you see. I control what I see, but I control what we're recording. So even though I'm looking at me, you, my bookshelf, and my paper, I'm only recording the paper. So let me turn this around so it's not the bookshelf anymore, but it's my whiteboard. So whatever you choose to see, my face, your face, whatever, at least I'm recording the paper. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to work. So when I the reason I mentioned that is because let's do a warm up and let's do 24 to 28. And for that reason, I'm gonna go pull up the book. So that is a positive thing about having the book online. I I don't know which way you choose to do it, and I'd I don't mind which way you choose to do it, but are you looking at that screen? Yes, you are. So did you do, did you buy the book or did you uh, look into the online version? I ended up getting a paper copy of the book. I usually, I like to have the book with, and usually, Though I will sometimes get the informational book or I will buy the electronic version, but I usually end up having an easier time with the paper copy. Okay. And, and that's the way I do it. I always want to have the paper copy, but at least in this format, it's kind of crazy, but at least I like the fact that they got an online one. So you see the website where you can look at this book literally for free. And so I'm gonna click the view online and then I go to the book. And the reason I'm showing you how to navigate is because I'm gonna pull up this problem. Then I look at the index, but it's the back where I wanna look at homework and practice problems. If I click homework, notice they start at 42 because he called the other ones practice. Oh, okay, I gotta fix that. Oops, I went too far backwards. <laughs> view online. Here's the book. We're going to get something valuable here in a second. Here's the practice. And here's what I thought was a really good problem, 24 to 28. Right there. Uh, the, it refers to the tables above. And 
I'll read them in a second. But let's look at the tables above and see what he was talking about. Let me see if I can expand that window. When I do that, I'm just looking at my other machine to make sure I do know what you see. Okay, so here's a very basic thing. Let's read it, knock out those problems. You can, you can even do them really fast, but it's going to get some vocabulary for us. Two researchers gathering data, hours of video games played by school-age children and young adults. So they each, you, me, we go sample 150 students from Delta College. You're at Delta College, I'm at Delta College. Uh, collect this information. So let's say the first table is me and the second table is you. I'll be A and you be B. Zero to two hours a week. 26 people told me that's what they do. Uh, 30 people told me they did two hours to four hours, 49 people, four hours to six hours. So let me just ask you some questions. You kick in this frequency table. Do you understand what you and I are counting there? How many, so times, we're... how many times, for example, how many times did a person tell you that they played six to eight hours a week? So it's like 25 people have admitted or at least believe that they play about six to eight hours of video games a so, week. That's right. And, yeah. and that's, the, that's if, if I'm A and you're B, that's what they told me. Uh, you came back to me and said, no, no, no. Only 12 people told me they played six to eight hours. And that absolutely doesn't mean either one of us is wrong. It's just that's what we got. Okay, so you understand the frequency column is just me and you counting what people said to us. Yes. Do you understand Out the relative frequency select individuals? What does the relative frequency column mean in your own word? I believe that it represents the overall percentage or how much of the total 150 of the votes were eight to 10, 10 to 12, six to eight for each of the sections. Good. So if 30 people told me they played between two and four hours and I interviewed 150 people, I got this 20% and it's very good. You, it is completely legitimate to call that a percent. 20% of them, three, 30 divided by 150 said to me, I play two to four hours a week. What percent told you they play two to four hours a week? If you're a researcher B. Researcher B? Yeah. 51, or there were 51 people right? who what percent? said two to four at about a 34 of Good. the total. Good. So I say 20% of them play that two to four hours a week. You say 34%. And there's absolutely, it's not either one of us is wrong. That's important. It's just you interview different people. Okay, now tell me what the cumulative relative frequency means. So for example, this 70% right here, let me clear that. That's 70%, I'm gonna draw that a different way. What does that 70% mean to you in English? So, it means to me that I think out of a, I think it relates to the group. Um, though I would admit a little hard in terms of, of putting together the cumulative relative, or relative um, 
So I'm guessing it may have something to do with uh, if you compare results. Okay, that's part of it. But I could also be very direct with the word cumulative here. So what it really means, is the most direct way I could say it, is that 33% of the people told me they played between four and six hours. But okay. the other people did play not more than six hours. So the cumulative means how many people told me they played four to six hours or less. So the cumulative is literally that number plus that number plus that okay. number. Okay. And if you add the 0 0.17, 0 0.20, and 0 0.33, it adds up to 0 0.7. So I could say legitimately 70% of the students I interviewed play video games six hours or less. That's what that 70% means. How many of the people that you interviewed play eight hours or less? Eight hours or less. And you're a researcher B. Ended up a cumulative relative frequency of 90%. Yeah. So as you added them all up, added all these four up, less than eight hours was 32%, 34%, 16%, 8%. In other words, 90% of the people you interviewed did less than eight hours. For me, it was 87. <coughs> okay, so this is the first step. And, and you have your book and I have my book. And so now I just wanna make sure we're on the same page, what this table means. Now let's answer the questions. Okay, step number one. And there's no right or wrong answer necessarily. Give me a reason why our tables are different. Why did the data differ? So the most obvious reason is that we gave, or that we sampled most likely different people of a population or different groups of a population. Some people, there may be a reason people play more. Maybe there is, maybe there's some sort of group that maybe are into games. Some of us, one of the two researchers may have found one of those groups, or there may be a people who, there may be a part of the population at Delta College who believe video games are, for example, obsolete. So, yeah, then, yeah, most likely. Yeah, the, the, the simplest us. way we could say it in English is we, we just talk to different people. And all they want you to do is learn to speak statistics. So in statistics language, one reason is these were different samples. Okay, now let's try this. 150 people. Both you and I now believe we could say something about students at Delta College. We have a feeling for how many hours a week, right? Do you think, and this is totally a judgment call in 25, do you think 150 people is enough for you to make a good guess about what's really going on for all the students at Delta College? It gives you some sort of credibility towards making a good guess. For it's example, different. you see most of the in both researcher A and B, for example, groups, there are large amounts of people for both, they both hold towards 80% in the, uh, so 
about 70% in the two to six hour range for this. Now, again, there are groups we may have missed. So most likely you may be able to get a decent guess, but I'm not sure you would have a, you may not have had enough people to correctly or to Good. guess close enough to the overall population. Now here, here I'll tell you an interesting thing now. Uh, 150 people, Delta College, let's just talk about students, probably has about, and let's, let's not say full-time part-time, let's just say any student, maybe 7,000 students at Delta College right now. The funny magical part is if we were just talking about Delta College and 150 students out of 7,000, that is actually quite legitimate. And statistics is gonna show us that. Now you did mention a key point. It would not be legitimate if I went to the LOL game group downstairs and asked them, because they are not a broad, typical representative sample of Delta Colleges, right? But if I was honest, trying to survey a broad number of people in some way that they described in the book, 150 people is actually quite a lot. And that's why I'm gonna to switch to my paper and do this. Uh, okay, well, I apologize if I missed someone. Let's go in here. I got, oh, Tabitha was just hanging out here. Hi Tabitha, how you doing? We're just talking, Tabitha, about problems 24 through 28 in chapter one. And you can pick us up here in the middle. So here's researcher A, and let's make a graph of relative frequency. And I don't have the book on the screen anymore, but I'm just going to refer to the book. And let's call this, and I am totally eyeballing this. So let's call this 10, 20, 30, and 40%. Researcher A from zero to two was 17%. So I'm just gonna put a line there and call that about 17%. It's between 10 and 20, it's closer to 20. Uh, for two to four was supposed to be 20%. From four to six was supposed to be 33%. So it took a little bit of a jump there. And from six to eight was 17%, back to 17% is down in here. And 8% from eight to 10. Now, uh, there's a little, let's call that 8%. Let's call this last one 5%. Do you see from researcher A, do you believe that I made a good graph, or does this graph make sense to you? Yes, it looks, it is a graph that looks like it makes sense to me. Good, so now let's plot researcher B, which we were pretending to be you. And so here's a really interesting thing. If you look at the picture, you already said that the tables look like they were similar. Now let's look at the pictures, 32, 34, 16, 8, 7, 3. Now again, I am only spitballing these sizes right here. I'm just roughly drawing them. But this looks like you or researcher B. And we both did 150 students. And we were both asking them how many hours a week they play video games. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, for me, I'd say it's zero to two. And whatever it is for you, that's okay. 
So I'm in this category. Now, it's very clear that these drawings are not the same. No one would say, oh, that they talked to the same people. No, we didn't. But are they so crazily different that someone says, well, you're talking to the people at Delta and he's talking to the people on Mars. No, they're not super different. So is 150 people large enough to, you know, for example, we both agree that not many people play more than eight hours a week. For me, it's 8% plus 5%, 13%. For you, it's... Uh, 7% plus 3% is 10%. That's not much difference. I think you and me differ a little bit at the beginning. Like you interviewed a lot of people that play less than four hours a week, 66%. I interviewed and the ones who play less than four hours a week is only 37%. And I see that from the cumulative relative frequency table. Let me go back to the book and let's see if we can answer the rest of these questions. Would the sample size be large enough? Let's just say maybe, but 26 should be a slam dunk. Would interviewing 150 people be large enough for you to make a conclusion about all school-aged children and young adults in the United States? What do you think? Yes, I would believe not. Yeah, no, I don't think I would anybody it. would say, oh, I interviewed the people at Delta College, and this is how every kid in the United States does it. No. So they were trying to say to you, 25, possibly, probably, 26, no one would believe that this is good enough for that. Now, 27, researcher A, and, and don't worry, I... I just want to say hi again to Tabitha. You can hang out, not hang out, audio, not video. I don't, either way you want to do it. But if you want to jump in, you can go ahead. Uh, re 27, research rate concludes that most students play video games between four and six hours a week. That's me. You conclude that most people play between two and four hours a week. That's you. And who is correct, and they, they're fishing for an answer here, what they're fishing for you to say is, we don't really know, but uh, at least you and I don't radically disagree. So is it possible we're both right? Well, that I would believe be from a no. We can't both be right, but are we probably both close to the true number? We're probably both close to the true number, whatever that is. What if the true number was 4.5? Then I wouldn't like give myself a medal and say, oh, I got it, you didn't. No, I would just say, yeah, 4.5 sounds good to me. And you would look at your thing and say, okay, 4.5 could be the case. Maybe I just interviewed some different people. Now let's reward, now, now here's another slam dunk on 28. Because I wanted people to answer my survey, let's say I gave them a gift card to uh, Apple Arcade. I don't know what your platform is. If you, do you play? Uh, I use, I don't really play too many video games. In terms of like the actual video games themselves, I stick towards a small group, mostly uh, real-time games. Uh, like LOL or what? I, uh, like real-time strategy games. Okay. Uh, and in my day, I don't want to date myself too much. I would have called that Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that was old, old school. Okay, so, but let's say that I started giving out gift cards for whatever platform you like. You know, is it Apple Arcade? Is it uh, 
video game store, whatever. Would this affect the information I collected and how would it affect it if students knew, if I put up a poster on campus and we were on campus, oh, come and take my video game survey, $20 gift card to, you know, whatever arcade you play at or $20 gift card to the Apple store or to the Google Play store. Would that be smart on my part or would I be inviting a problem? That's what they're trying to get you to say. I believe you would. Yeah, I believe you would be inviting a problem if you, for example, if you look at it, a lot of people play across a different platforms. You said oh, that hey, we true. were selling a, we were giving a gift card. That's one of the points I would make would be you're inviting a specific group. That's a good point. Cause I, I didn't even think about that. I like that. If I offered a gift card to Bed Bath & Beyond, then who's going to come and see me? Well, people who want to go to Bed Bath & Beyond or PetSmart or the arcade. So I think your answer is better than mine. I was going to say, yes, it affects it, but you're giving a reason why it affects it. You're saying, I'm going to skew, that's a fancy word, skew my results. Or another way to say it is I'm going to mess up my results by only attracting people who want that card. Yes, that's good. So that's what they want you to say in 28. I think you're right. Okay, so- I also do have a- uh, To build on to that, to build on to my answer, I also noticed that there may also be a difference and it may affect numbers even more drastically. For example, if you don't, not only if you don't use it, but maybe people who use that platform more than others will be more likely to show up. Right. If I said Google Play versus Apple Arcade, that's right. Uh, and I'm sure there are LOL cards out there. And I, I'm only fixated on that because if I asked my son, he'd say he probably plays eight to 10 hours a week of League of Legends. <laughs> so, uh, so good. So, so this is what I want to do. And, and even though it'll take a few minutes, that is time well spent. So all I, this is what I wanted to know that you and I at least saw that we were on the same planet. We saw the same thing. And that's the beginning. Now, in the back of your mind, it's not even satisfactory that we're on the same planet you say no no but i want to know if we come up with the same answer we're going to get to that part but do you understand the words the tables in the same way i do that's the most important thing we want to say now i also want to check out so tabitha at the beginning of the hour and i am recording this i just said whoever shows up these are the questions that i thought were really interesting in that chapter maybe you got others now, did you have you checked out any of these, or did you did you have a question you wanted to talk about, Tabitha? Um, no, I don't have a question or on any of them yet. <laughs> okay, good. I only no did problem. a couple. I only did like that first one, so I haven't really got to dig into the, the other ones yet. Don't worry about it. And and would I make a list on my web page? I am making a list of probably more things than you can consume you know like okay you're not going to do a hundred problems but so you feel i want you to feel comfortable just picking through some now 83 and 85 and 86 i probably picked those because they were close to the i forgot what problem did i tell you to do so if you want to talk about a problem more like one i told you to do i got no problem with that 
Or... I did mostly. I did mostly like reading when I um, over yesterday. So I was Good. mostly reading the chapters and stuff. So Good. And in this first chapter and the second chapter, mm -hmm. that is going to be the most important thing to do because uh, a lot of this is like getting you comfortable with the vocabulary. So a lot of these questions are even just questions okay. about the vocabulary. So I can pick out another problem or if either one of you have a preference from that list I have in front of you, I don't mind. I'm looking at something like this. Let me look at, let me pick one more out right here. And I'm not trying to go in order, but I want to illustrate what I just said to you that at this time, we're not talking about right answer, wrong answer yet. We're just talking about, does this sound legitimate to you? Does this sound good to you? So let me pull up problem 74, because I want to, I'm checking your intuition. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back to sharing a copy of the book on the screen with you. So uh, I don't mind. I was having this conversation with Brandon, sorry, excuse me, Braden earlier. Uh, you could use the book online. You could use the book in person. Did, did you get a copy of the book or are you reading it online? I'm using it online right now until I get an actual copy. I it hasn't come in yet. So it's yeah. been kind of hard for me to <laughs> use just the online version. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. Am I sharing? Let me make sure I'm sharing the screen so we can read this together. You see that screen here? Here's problem 74. Okay. Do, do you guys see that right now? Yes. Okay, good. So let's. This is what I mean by I want to check your intuition. Someone claims that there's a random survey of 3,200 people, 3,300. And they call these people just casually the microprocessor generation. I'm going to interview people born since 1971 when the microprocessor came out. And they say to you that 48% of those people surveyed said that if they had $2,000 to spend, they would use it for computer equipment. I suppose, as opposed to softball equipment or musical CDs, I can't even say CDs anymore, can I? <laughs> uh, shoes, tennis rackets, I guess I, I like sports, so sometimes I think in terms of sports. And we're not talking about food and shelter, probably. You know, like if they needed food and shelter, they would spend the two thousand dollars of food and shelter. So I'm probably thinking like free two thousand dollars, free money here. Sixty-six percent surveyed said they considered themselves pretty smart computer users. Now, give me your impressions, either one of you or both of you, on these questions. Do you think that this sample size? was large enough to make good conclusions about these people born since 1971. Got a chance, no chance, very good chance. Do you think this is enough people? And I do have an answer in my mind, but I'm but if it's different, if you say a different one, I'm not going to quibble with it. I'm just going to give you the reasons why I believe my answer is good. What do you think about part A? I guess that's a big, it's a large number. I, 
It's a lot of people. It's but, a lot of people. And, and yeah. the next thing I would say is I would probably want to know how many people were born since 1971. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I don't know that, but, but I'll point, I'm going to go back to something I read in this section. This is what I mean by, this is what I mean by your intuition. In this section, they did point out to you that when people do political surveys, they usually can work with one to 2,000 people and claim that they're being accurate. Have you ever heard something like that before? Yes, I have. Yeah, and now you and I can, since we're not professional statisticians, maybe I believe them, maybe I don't. But let's assume I believe them. If they can do the voting population of the United States, I mean, do means like get a good picture of with 2,000 people. Do I think I could get a good picture of people born since 1971 with 3,300 people? Now I'm more inclined to say yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's no right or wrong answer to A, but my feeling is it's potentially legitimate. But as we were talking about in that last problem, I could do all sorts of bad things that make it illegitimate. Like I could just survey uh, 3,000 people at Delta College. And most of them were born after 1995. And, th and that would not be legitimate. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. So I could think of ways I could screw this up, but let's assume, let's extend them the courtesy of assuming they did it well. 3,300 might be enough. Okay, next question gut feeling. Do you believe the percents that are being reported to you are, do they sound right? Or if not, do you think that those numbers, the 48%, the 66% could be higher or lower? Now, this is total judgment call. Mm. But they give you this additional information. The survey that we're talking about was reported by the Intel Corporation and it was filled out by individuals who visited the Los Angeles Convention Center to see an exhibit called America's Smithsonian. So first of all, 48% said if they had two grand, they'd go out and buy computer equipment. Do you think that's high or low? Um, I guess it's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, in the middle almost, I don't. Uh... Well, okay, now let's think about some of your friends or neighbors, and, and I could tell you what I would do. I, if I had two grand, I don't think I would buy computer equipment. I think I could have fun doing other things too. Right. 48% <laughs> is like saying one out of every two people, every other person you ask, them, oh yeah, I'm going to go buy a computer. Oh yeah, I'm going to go buy an iPad. Yeah, oh yeah, like I'm going to go. It's like saying half of, uh, like everybody would go buy a computer. That's I don't, I'm, I'm just thinking of my own friends yeah, and neighbors. Yeah. Maybe it's higher. Yeah. But maybe it's not. Yeah. Okay, how about this 66%, Braden? Do you believe that if we went out there and surveyed people, two out of three would say, yeah, I'm cool with computers. I, I know would say, to... so first of all, it depends on which population. Um, I think that would cause a bit of variation, though I do not believe that many people would say that they do, or they may. Um, some may consider, it depends, is there isn't, I don't believe, a standard for how much you know about the computer to say, hey, I'm relatively 
savvy with the computer. Yeah, but, I don't think a lot of people would say that they're well, savvy. <laughs> yeah, most and most that people, is. even if they're, sometimes there's a natural tendency to be self-deprecating and say, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm okay with computers. And they yeah. might be pretty good. I'll tell you what my 16-year-old daughter would say. I know more than you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the problem, right? <laughs> but then, so my 16-year-old daughter might way, way, way overestimate. And, and in fact, I have to say, okay, okay, sweetheart, you know how to run your phone and you're good at that. But give me a spreadsheet about our family spending for the last year. Right. Like they no. know how to use like the basic, those basic things, but she said, that's not a computer, dad. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I still think 66% is possibly high. Now they said this was filled out by, you know, by the Intel corporation, by people visiting a museum show or some kind. It's possible that they were talking to people were they talking to people who might own computers more than other people? If they went to the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball game and asked these questions, would they get different answers? Maybe. So these answers could be good or not. And I think what the problem was trying to say to you is, you know, 3,300 people probably sounds good, but you better be careful who you're asking. Okay. Let's hit C right here. Additional information. Do you feel that all demographic or ethnic groups were equally represented at this museum show? Mm, possibly not. Maybe yeah. not. And with this additional information, now, have you reevaluated what you think about that 48% and 66%? If people just throw those numbers at you, you're, you're very likely to say, okay, okay. But then you think about it, you think about who they talk to, then you say, mm, okay, maybe, or oh, maybe not. So part of this whole chapter one is getting you to get a good intuition about what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, what's good enough, what's not good enough, and how careful you really have to be when you either do a survey or more important to you and me maybe when we read one, when I read the paper, when I read the USA Today and someone tells me this is the fact and, and I just read it and I just say, yeah, okay, that's the fact. But did I evaluate what the fact was? So I said this on the first day and I'll say it again, in a very funny way, statistics is like magic. We are gonna show you in a way how to tell the difference between stuff that's real and not real. And since it's your first statistics class possibly, I don't, you know, we're gonna tell you some good stuff, but if you really study statistics and go farther, or maybe if you were a professional in this field, you might be able to survey a thousand people and tell me who the next president's gonna be. However, in the last couple of elections, they haven't done very well. <laughs> yes and no. And, and part of the thing that gives, and part of the thing that disses, disrespects statistics too, too much is they look at all the failures, like, oh yeah, CNN said, you know, Michael Dukakis was going to win. CNN said Hillary Clinton was going to win. They must be idiots because Michael Dukakis did not defeat George Bush. If you remember or have ever heard the name Michael Dukakis. So when something goes wrong, it's really easy for us to be critical and say, no, they don't know what they're talking about. But you got to Think about this now. Statistics is not going to promise you that you will know the truth. But it's going to say to you, I can give you a way to evaluate 
how much you believe in something. Like this 48% and 66%. And right now in this problem, it's only a gut feeling. But I can actually show you some relatively simple mathematical formulas as we go along so that you could read something and say, that's possible. Or you could read something and say, no, I don't even believe that. And that would be the gift I could give you if we do this well, that you could kind of have that tool. You could kind of have that skill. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I promise you, you know, if, if things are going well, maybe you're not gonna turn into like some kind of oracle that can tell truth from lies every time, but you will have some tools. Okay, I'm looking at this list still. Uh, I'm looking at 83, I'm looking at 85. If you have a preference, you just kick right in. 84, I actually posted a sample online. 81 was interesting. Eighty-five, eighty-six. Let's say I'm kind of drawn to eighty-one and eighty-three, just as a sample. If you don't mind, let's look at one of those. Uh, and I am still sharing my book. Yes, I am. So. I'm sharing the book, I'm recording what's on the paper. And as I said to your class that you'll get used to, I will even copy everything I wrote on the paper. I'll just scan it and post it on the website afterwards. Let's look at 81. And the reason I'm gonna look at 81 is because I just wanna double check again. Is everyone very clear on what those three words mean? Frequency, relative frequency, cumulative relative frequency. So shout it out if you got it and you can take your time, but we've interviewed you and I, our statistics firm, our polling firm have interviewed 60 results with gum disease. And we asked them, how many times per week did you floss before you met? the uh, periodontal dentist. When, when you have a gum issue, they send you to a periodontist. I don't know if you've ever heard that word before, but I've heard it because I've been there. So 60 adults with gum disease were asked how many times a week they flossed before they were diagnosed with a gum problem. And here's the result. 27 people said zero. One person said seven. I think that's uh, possibly true. If you were flossing seven times a week, I don't think you're gonna visit the periodontist yet. Okay, so this makes sense, but there's clearly missing information. So start to fill in the missing information. What number goes right there? 'm think I'm acting that, asking that out of left field, but I'm not. You can actually know the number there. We should ask this too, because I did this in the last hour when I was working with someone. Do you see the red triangle I drew on the screen? Yes. Okay, good, good. Because someone else hadn't had that turned on. Can I know the number in that red box? If so, what is it? Is it six? I'm calculating. Uh, you calculated six. Uh, well, they added, they counted 60 people. How many people do we got uh, so far? 45. 49. 49. So that means, and there's only one box left. So what goes in here? 11. I, I agree with that. 
Okay, and, and I don't know whether you see the 11 I typed, but do you see the 11? Yeah. Okay, I'm, and I'm asking these questions because like, I'm, I'm okay with computers, whether I'd call myself computer savvy or not, I don't know, but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And only since this whole virus thing happened, have I ever taught online? Okay, good. Now let's, and you, and you, oh, you can even justify yeah. why you did that. You said, well, there's 60 people. Yeah. I've accounted for 49. There's only one box left. That must be 11. But that means in my book, you can start to fill in the other ones too. So, and you may need a calculator, but fill in these two boxes. How did someone say 45% there? And I don't know, maybe this was before or after you arrived, Tabitha. Uh, Braden read this 0. 0.4500 as 45%. And you that is legitimate. That is 45% or 0.45. You got that from taking 27 divided by 60. On your calculator, that would be 0. 0.45. So I'm just pulling up my calculator to find out what 18 divided by 60 is. I get 0 0.3 or 0 0.3. I do get 0 0.3 and I only have to do this because I don't even, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm drawing with lines and I shouldn't be drawing with lines. Okay. Whether I can type it in here or not, it's 0 0.3. <laughs> uh, in fact, 0 0.3 is the answer, but I'm gonna just out of respect to the rest of the columns, when he used four digits, I'll use four digits. And, and then you can ask me a question like, why did you choose four digits? And right now I'll just say the answer like this. If they did, I will. But there is actually a good reason why they did that. And we'll get to things like that later. How about 11 out of 80? How much was that? My calculator says 11 out of 60, excuse me. Uh, 0.1833. And you rounded it correctly. Yeah, same. yeah, and you rounded it correctly. And if it would have been 1833 in the next digit would have been seven, you would have said 1834. Yes. Okay, so, yeah, good, got it. So we agree on that stuff. Uh, in fact, notice how this adds up to 60. Notice how this column, if you ran it through your calculator, plus or minus a digit would add up to what? It would add up to one. It would add up to 100% or one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, even though it looks like busy work, fill in these four cumulative relative frequencies for me. First one. Okay, no points for that, but what about the second one? What number goes in this box below? the second cumulative relative frequency box. When we think about cumulative relative frequency box in the way in, in plain English, think about it like this, all the people up to there. In other words, 45 people lost once or less. Add the 11, 56 of the 60 lost three times or less. Okay, now I'm getting personally nervous. <laughs> Maybe that's why I went to see a periodontist. But that's just numbers. So cumulative relative frequency means add up the percents. So how many people floss zero times a week? 45%. How many people floss once or below times a week? Then you say 75. Right. And then where do they get that 
1833 from. They must have added 75 and 1833, which we could check is 9333. How many people? Let's do this one. We're six times or less. 93. Yeah, in fact, pretty much all of them. Hmm. How many people were seven times or less? And, and this shouldn't surprise me. This is what I expect. Yeah. Because those were the only answers I got. So when I'm done, it better add up to 100%. Yeah. Now, first you say this last column is busy work. But look how slick it makes the answer to C. What percent flossed at most three times a week? You see the, go ahead. Do you see the number on the screen? What is it? 93.33% of 60 adults plus yeah. six or not six, three times per week. Right. Making it. So the answer is. It's right. It, right off the bat. It's yeah. The cumulative relative frequency kind of gives you what you call in English a running total. Mm -hmm. Or what if I had said the question like this? Uh, you interviewed 60 people. How many of them flossed more than five times a week? And more than five times a week would be the six or seven. It would be what compared to this 9833? It would be six or seven. What compared to the 9333? See, if I say more than five times a week, it's going to be the this is a funny word, but opposite of 0.9333. I don't mean opposite. What I mean is one minus 0.933. Five times or more a week would be these last two numbers, which coincidentally adds up to one minus 0.933. It would be 667. It would be 0 0.0667 or 6.7%. And you're in the periodontist's office and you ask the periodontist, well, how many of your patients report that they floss more than five times a week? Let's assume they're telling the truth. If the periodontist said to you, yeah, about 6%, about 5%, yeah, you'd say, okay, I'm ready to believe that. So when, and you're going to see this theme everywhere in this class. When we add columns to a table, it is not because I'm creating busy work, but I'm gonna show you that kind of like calculations are gonna build on each other. And we're gonna constantly use tables and we're gonna be constantly adding another column to the table. And the reason we're doing this because every time we add another column to the table, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be summarizing something else. That's cool. That's, that'd be a plain way to say it. So what you're going to do is then you're going to get in the habit of any time people give you a list of numbers like 27, 18, 11, 3, 1, you're just going to get in the habit of snapping down these two columns right away without even thinking about it. And in fact, let me pull out a calculator and let me go back to my paper. It will be the case that, let me stop sharing so I know that I'm recording my calculator. Okay, I'm over here on my calculator. And is that what you see? Yes, I see your calculator. Yeah, okay. So, and, and I said this to Braden also at the beginning. You can make this the big screen. You can make this a small screen. You can make this any screen you want. But on my recording, you're going to see this. Okay, now I'm going to go to the table here. So because the table we just filled out, you say, oh, that's no big deal. I mean, like, 
uh, I could fill in that table. But when we get up to a table look like that, then you're gonna say, I don't wanna do that one number at a time with my calculator. So here is a frequency and cumulative relative frequency table that I made the calculator do for me. Mm -hmm. And it created this graph. So what I want you to do is don't look at this chapter one problems and say, oh my gosh, am I gonna be filling in these things one box at a time? No, I need to know that you know what each column means. But if anybody was doing this for money, they're not doing it with their pencil, filling in one box at a time. If you're using the calculator, they're using Excel. I'll show you how to use Excel too. So I just want to be, but before I snap out, before you snap out a table with a hundred rows, I got to make sure you have a feeling for what the rows mean. Okay. That's my goal. So I will, it's not today, but I will show you how to create that thing so the calculator does the cumulative list for you. I don't know if you can see this. I'll bring this up to the screen closer. Look at list four. Do you see how it starts small and then always increases and adds up to one? Yes. Well, now you're thinking that must be a cumulative relative frequency list. Right, so don't believe for a second that I typed all those in by myself. <laughs> okay. Because you got better things to do and I got better things to do. So the, the trouble is sometimes if I just show people the calculator first, then it's like handing the 10 year old the keys to the car. Like, okay. They might get from here to there and they might cause a lot of damage in between. So uh, we'll show you how to do this and automate it so you get faster and faster. Okay, what planet am I on right now? Let me show you something. And unless you have a question, you guys are always free to lead by asking a question. <clears throat> Let me show you something kind of sneaky and interesting since I just promised you Calculators can make this faster. Let me show you something interesting in problem 83. So this morning, I was just thinking about this. this I went through my book. I said this to Braden. I just made a list this morning of what problems would be interesting to show people. This is my list. You can always come to these sessions. Please do and bring your own list. And okay. then... I'll let you guys call the shots, but I just gotta like get things rolling. And I'll tell you this too, I, I don't mind video or no video. In fact, I've done, I'm more comfortable personally doing no video, but I don't mind doing video of you know my face right now because I'm not focusing on my face anyway. Uh, let's look at problem 83. So I'm gonna pull it up on screen. I'm gonna go find it. Make sure you're seeing it. It's right there. Okay, here's the interesting thing. How much time does it take to travel to work? And here's a table of what they call the mean commute time by state for workers for at least 16 years old who are not working at home. So let's unwrap that. By state, then I think they're talking about the United States. They're talking to me about the 50 states. Okay, there's 50 numbers here. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, commute time, driving to and from work. Okay, we used to do that. <laughs> we still do in some cases. <laughs> Mean commute time. Uh, mean is a fancy word for average. Uh, and, and we're gonna interview people who are 16 years old, not working at home. That means, you know, people who are like legally working, not the uh, young person doing ice cream while they're in high school or something. So 
uh, let's see, what did I used to drive to work every day while we were working in person at Delta College? It was, it was about 20 minutes. And I scan this table and I see a lot of 20s. I see an 18. You guys got a low one there somewhere? 18. 17.9. Oh, right? There's a 16.7. Good. Uh, big numbers? 27. 28.1. 30.1. 20. I saw a 16.3 earlier for the small yeah, numbers. Good. Good. So now you're pointing out to me our problem. Our problem is this stuff is all probably true. Let's assume that people did this right. But it's hard for us to read. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you two ways you can make this almost instantly easier to read. Because what you're really interested in is Okay, what's the middle of the road? So I'm going to do this. And to do that, I'm going to have to share a screen a different way. I'm going to stop the share there. Share screen. I'm going to go share screen. I'm going to go back to that screen. So now you're still looking at the same thing, but now you're looking at my computer screen. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So I want some kind of magic where all these numbers are sorted. <laughs> So first I'm going to highlight them with my mouse. And on my computer, I'm just gonna hit Control C or Command C, depends on what computer you are. And then I'm gonna open an Excel spreadsheet. Now, uh, Excel is not an unusual program. And uh, if you have it on your computer, it's gonna be beneficial. If you don't, we can help you get it. But now you see an Excel spreadsheet, right? Yes. Now I'm gonna paste. <laughs> and nowadays, that's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me make this a little bit more readable for you possibly. Okay, I'm making it larger. Now I'm gonna change the font because I don't like Noia Helvetica, whatever that is, I want to, uh, Menlo is okay. And now I see decimal places, some yes, some no. Let's make sure we're all using the same number of decimal places. That's not important, but it makes it easier on the eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now next step. I am going to, and we already agree that there are 50 numbers here. I'm going to, yep. since I'm not very proficient at Excel, I'm just gonna drag the numbers into one list. If I knew what I was doing with Excel, there'd probably be a faster way to do this. <laughs> but the message I'm trying to give you here is, uh, if I was rearranging these on paper with my hands, it would take me 10 minutes. So don't be afraid to experiment with something else. Now, the downside of putting them all in one list here is I do not see all 50 of them at the same time. Okay, I can get over that. Uh, I mean, I, I can adjust for that. I'm going to insert a line here. But now, at least you and I believe that we've got all 50 of them here. And they go from one to 51, so that makes sense. But you know what I'm gonna do next possibly, maybe if you've opened an Excel spreadsheet, I'm gonna take this list, highlight the whole list, and then say under data, sort. From smallest to largest, I like that. Uh, oh, why did it not do it? Okay, this is a little bit of Excel magic right here. I think it did it now. The reason it didn't do it before is because I had, and I got to show you, and this is why I'm showing you my screen. I had a um, button checked called My List Has Headers. I got to undo that. So let's undo that. 
Oh. So no. when I clicked all this list, I should have said, I, I had this box checked. My list has headers. And then it didn't sort the first element. Mm -hmm. But if I say my list does not have headers, then it just asks me what column. Okay, now that seems very fast. And they're now all in order. And I can think of a middle. 50 numbers, maybe the middle is 25, 23.4, maybe. But here's an even slicker way by hand. And now I'm gonna go back to my paper. And the reason I'm showing you this is it's a preview of next week. In this little table here, what did I do? Can you see what I did? Can you make that a little bigger or like? Uh, go ahead. Uh, I probably not. Now I'm. Okay. Are you? Can you? open This is the part that's on your side. Can you open okay. that window? Are you on a phone? What are you doing? I'm on my laptop. Okay. But I don't can you know can you it. make that like, window larger? Or do you do you see these digits, or is it way too small? Oh, there it is. Okay, now I see it. All right. And and you could do that by checking which window you were looking at. Yeah. That's good. Okay, that's now good. I that's, see it. <laughs> That's a Zoom lesson. Like on your side, you control which window you're looking at. Okay. Good. Yep, I see it. So this this table that I made here, can you see what I did? A stem and leaf plot. The fancy word is a stem and leaf plot. I took the numbers like sixteen three, sixteen seven, mm -hmm. thirty one, and I wrote them by concentrating on the last digit. On this side, I have what's called the leaves. These are the last digits. And on the left side, I have the stems, everything but the last digit. So I took those 15 numbers and I read them from one to 50 and I just made this list. And I said, to tell you the truth, I started at 18. And then I came across the 16 and I put it two lines above. And I went down to 28, but after a few columns, I said, oh, there's a 30. Oh, there's a 31. So first of all, I did a raw scan of those 50 numbers and I put them in order. And then look at these leaves. The leaves are all crazy out of order, right? Mm -hmm. I redid it in order. Now, do you have a good feeling about how long on average it takes people to drive to work? I would I say, yeah, or yeah, at give least- me a, Give me a ballpark, idea. rough number. If you had to bet money, you'd probably bet 23 or 24. Yeah. No one would bet 28. Yeah. Now, I might ask you to do better, like give me 23.5, 23.6, 24.2. Well, then you could use a calculator. But this graph, which is called a stem and leaf plot, is actually a quick and dirty way to see what's happening with that set. If I go back to my spreadsheet, you like this spreadsheet, right? Uh, let me go back and plug these, copy. You even like this table that we copied. But if I ask you the question like, what's the average drive to work? You're not going to get it from this table, except you take 15 minutes to rearrange it. If I say, what's the average time to work? And I made this list for you, 
that might be a little bit helpful. And I guessed, oh, let's go for the middle one, 23.4. Actually, that sounds pretty good compared to my other graph now. If I wanted to really know, I would take the mean by adding all these numbers and then dividing by 50. Let me do that on the spreadsheet. I will sum. Don't worry if you don't know any spreadsheet commands right now. I'll show you some as we go along. I will sum those numbers. No, I don't want that number. Why did I jump to the other screen? Because I touched the mouse pad. So I'll sum those numbers, which is 1173, and I will divide by 50. Okay. Excel says the average is 23.5. Uh, more digits, 2346, 23462. Okay, now I, I'm gonna wrap this up now. But what if I said to you, the average is 23.462 minutes for your drive to work? Well, mathematically, you'd be impressed. But no one measures their drive to work to the nearest thousandth of a minute. So probably you'd say to me, you're overdoing it, Dave. Just how about 23.5? Now, I'll tell you why I don't like 23.5. Here's a rule of thumb in statistics. It's very cool, and you got to remember it. Do you see all your data is to the nearest tenth of a minute? So the rule of thumb says, if your data is to the nearest tenth of a minute, consider reporting the average one more decimal place. I don't think 46 one hundredths of a minute really means anything. But as far as reporting this data to you, I would probably say if you asked me what the average was, I would say about 23.46. And what else did I want to say about that? But I, let me go back to my paper. But I want you to say, how about this? This graph took me just five minutes to scribble together. And it gave me a really quick answer. And by the way, I forgot to bring my calculator today. No, I mean, you, you better have your calculator with you. But uh, this is a preview of chapter two. So what's chapter two about? Chapter one was about how willing are you to believe people? You got to learn all these words. Let's be critical. Chapter two is now going to be about Okay, I'm going to give you piles of numbers and I'm going to ask you questions about them like, what's the average? Where do they go from here to there? Which one happens most often? In other words, once someone gives me a pile of numbers, I'm going to start to ask questions like that. Like, what's the average? How far do most people separate from the average? That's starting to do the math work of statistics. And this would be, you could consider this, this is called a stem and leaf plot. This would be like your first example of organizing data. Now, I'm not doing problem 83 because problem 83 just asked you to find the average. But what I was doing was saying, oh, is there some kind of fun way I could show you that you don't have to work too much harder to get a lot more information. I almost calculated the average right here. If I would have told you the average was 23.5 after looking at this table, you would have said, I can't say you're wrong. You wouldn't have been able to know whether I was right or not. But you can't, you say, I can't say you're wrong. However, if I said the average was 25.5, you would have looked at this table and said, uh, no, I, I don't believe you. Uh, I'm not, did you check that? Are you sure? See, so you can make decisions even if you don't physically calculate things. If you organize things, it's all about organization. That's what it's going to be for us in the semester. It's all about organization. Okay, so thank you for coming. And I'm going to, I did record this. I will post it because some people are not available at this time and they consume it 
on their own time. But, and you can tell me whether you want, this is the way you want to run it or not want to run it. But when you bring your own questions to this too, then this will also be productive as you get going. Uh, but this is how I wanted to try to start things. Okay. Okay. So you guys uh, were doing a good job there. Uh, you can always send me a question by email and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, dig into the homework system if you're not there yet, just to get into it. Okay. Are you in it? Yes or no? I'm still trying to understand the definition. <laughs> okay, but, yeah. but at least log in and create the account. So oh yeah, for for the have done that. Yep, I have done that. Okay, for the good. new in or the yeah for the site. Good, good. Okay, so but if you run across a problem there, let me know. So just send me some emails, and I'll see you guys next week. You have a good week. Okay. Yep. You too. Thank you. Bye. 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 All right. We'll see you next week. I hope to see you next. Time. Yep.